Hi friends, and welcome to this episode of Talking Treasure. I'm your host, David Aaron Carpenter. Let's take a journey back to the advanced civilization of ancient Egypt. I've always had an affinity for its fascinating 3,000 year history, and my interest was rekindled having the unique opportunity to actually purchase authentic Egyptian artifacts. And how could I forget the recent traveling exhibition of King Tut's tomb, which was discovered in the Valley of the Kings in 1922? You would not believe how stuffy it is in there. How can you speak English? I went to Cambridge University. I believe King Tut is asking all of you to click on that like button and subscribe to my YouTube page. Thanks guys. Just as the afterlife was big business in ancient Egypt, pieces from Egyptian tombs are more in demand now than ever before, realizing massive prices at galleries and at auction. Last year, this beautiful Egyptian sarcophagus sold at Christie's for a staggering $3.25 million. Created during the third intermediate period around 900 BC, this 3000 year old coffin was one of the finest to ever appear at auction. Now, since I don't have a museum to house most of my collection, buying a sarcophagus like this or a funerary mass would be highly impractical and leaving it at my home would probably freak out my family just a little bit. So, as any good collector would do, I sought out pieces that are a little bit more manageable in size and that would bring me some good karma. This just keeps getting better and better. There are many Egyptian artifacts that fit the bill of being both physically compact and aesthetically beautiful. There are pieces of jewelry called amulets. This is a 2,500 year old amulet known as Thoth. He was the Egyptian god of wisdom, knowledge, hieroglyphics, and the moon. It was even believed that Thoth created music. Also really cool objects are scarabs and these wooden boats. Check out these scarabs. Only recently did I know what a Shopti was, let alone realize that I could actually purchase one. A Shopti is a mummy-like figurine of about 5 to 30 centimeters found in many of the ancient Egyptian tombs. They are commonly made of blue or green glazed Egyptian faience which is a type of ceramic, but can also be made of stone, wood, clay, metal, and glass. These objects often hold tools in their arm, and their purpose was to serve the deceased when the gods requested him to undertake manual labor. In other words, be his slave. Let my people go! The word Ushapti is usually translated as answerer. During the New Kingdom, which was 1539 to 1075 BC, the figures were made to resemble the tomb owner by being fashioned in the form of a mummy bearing the owner's name. In a typical tomb, the deceased would be bestowed a box of Ushaptis, one statue for every day, 365, plus one overseer Ushapti for every 20 laboring Ushaptis. So every tomb would have about 400 of these. Last year, I traveled to Monaco to visit a friend who was putting on an auction at HVMC. On the table was one of the most beautiful arrays of Ushapti figurines in perfect condition from the same private collection, all bought by the collector in the 1960s and the 1970s. All of the pieces were supposed to sell at auction, but I knew I had to have them. I had a sense of the value of each one after seeing a recent Christie's auction. There was a fascinating Ushapti from the tomb in Saqqara, which is the Valley of the Dead. Although this Shopti had an estimate of $25,000 to $35,000, the piece had a bidding war and sold at Christie's for $50,000. Now this piece is worth considerably more. So what does the writing on a new Shopti actually say? If we look at this example, there are nine bands of fine hieroglyphics with standard text from the chapter 6 of the Book of the Dead, reading something along the lines of, 
shaptis, counted in order to cultivate the fields, in order to irrigate the riverbanks, in order to convey sand of the west to the east. So, I made an offer on the entire lot. And, surprisingly, because of my good friend Bianca's professionalism and persistence at HVMC, I was able to get the entire lot before it went to auction. I was so excited, I even played for the mummy in the room. The biggest issues with these shoptis is that unless the pieces were bought and legally exported out of Egypt before 1980, do not even think about buying the piece because of export and customs laws. For you to properly purchase an artifact, it has to be accompanied by a passport like this. Make sure the piece was exported out of Egypt legally, and auction houses typically do a very good job with this due diligence, but be sure to ask the right questions so that this is 100% correct and you have all the paperwork. I hope you've enjoyed this brief discussion about some of my favorite ancient Egyptian artifacts. There are a few objects in this world that are filled with so much mystery as these powerful figurines. I hope that you will all have a chance to go to a museum or an auction house to examine these wonders up close. Next time you do, please tag me in a post on Instagram and I'll be sure to share it. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Talking Treasure and I hope to see you next time.